Okay, so uh, on a day when I've uh, published five videos on YouTube, uh, this is the um, last one. So, um, you know, maybe this is the most important one because basically um, this is all about holding government to account. Um, as I always state, this is for GCSE citizenship studies. It's for the AQA spec, but will do for any other spec as well. Okay, so we're talking in this video, or I'm talking in this video about holding the government to account. Now, this is a really, really important thing because um, basically just because a government is in power, it doesn't mean to say that it can get away with what it wants. It might want to, but it needs to be held to account. And what we're going to do in this video is look at how the government and politicians are held to account. Now, I should say that in an age where sometimes we're a little bit cynical about, you know, holding people in power to account and basically saying nothing changes, sometimes encounters with a single member of the public can have a bigger impact than can be expected. Now, what you can see on the screen is a... Uh, communication breakdown between uh, the politician and prime minister at the time, Gordon Brown, with a member of the public, Gillian Duffy. Gillian Duffy uh, encountered Gordon Brown on a walkabout um, and she asked him about immigration, a question that politicians had really not wanted to talk about. Um, Gordon Brown sort of, you know, spoke to her for a little bit, got in his car and drove off. What he didn't realise was that his microphone hadn't been turned off and he called Gillian Duffy a bigoted woman. As a result of that, um, he was forced to apologise. He was forced to accept that Gillian Duffy had raised some valid questions and ultimately he lost the election. So, as I've mentioned, sometimes, you know, things for politicians, you know, when they are held to account, don't uh, go quite as planned um, or as they may have anticipated. Can't get my words out. OK, so whilst the government basically makes these uh, makes their decisions, these have to be democratic. And like all democracies, the government is scrutinised. In other words, the decisions it makes are looked at and basically questioned. In other words, it has to justify its decisions by both public and parliamentary groups, such as select committees. And you can see a select committee in uh, session on the board. Um, perhaps the most popular event um, where the government is scrutinised is something that takes place in the House of Commons every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Um, it's Prime Minister's questions. Basically, Every Wednesday at 12 p.m., the Prime Minister has to attend the House of Commons to answer questions. They're often about events that have happened in the last week, and they can be quite noisy affairs. You've seen them on TV where people are seemingly just shouting at one another. Now, although PMQs is the most famous uh, example of this kind of questioning process, ministerial statements are common and basically require government ministers to come to the House of Commons on a daily basis, basically, and explain the government's position and then face questions about these. So although PMQs is the big event, this kind of question uh, questioning of government decisions takes place in the House of Commons, um, as I say, on a, on a daily basis. So, you know, when I talk about it being done on a daily basis, let's take a day in Parliament and see what was going on. Now, I looked online and I chose Wednesday the 30th of March. So if you look online, it will tell you what was taking place in Parliament on any given day. So on Wednesday the 30th of March 2022, there was PMQs. So Boris Johnson came to Parliament. But alongside PMQs, there were debates going on in Westminster Hall, which is a building next to the Houses of Parliament, uh, including one on the banning of disposable barbecues. So, you know, the debate was whether disposable barbecues are environmentally friendly. Um, in the House of Lords, they were holding a third reading of a bill, a draft law on nuclear energy. And in committee room 15, so one of the rooms within uh, the Houses of Parliament, um, they had an education committee meeting, which was to discuss post-16 education, uh, you know, and whether the qualifications were as good as qualifications in other countries. 
And as a member of the public, you're basically entitled to see all of these taking place. There are bits which are held in private, but overall, you know, you basically have a right to go along to Parliament and um, to see whether Parliament is undertaking the kind of things that you would expect to see um, going on. So what's this mean? Well, sometimes it gives the impression that the House of Commons is basically empty and that nobody's doing anything. Um, sometimes you see those scenes on TV. There's one on, as I say, the picture you can see uh, in front of you. Uh, and that's largely because MPs are often doing work either elsewhere in Parliament or in their constituency offices. So sometimes the debates in Parliament can seem as if they've only got sort of three people in them. Uh, and that, as I say, is only because they're often doing other parliamentary work or maybe the debate is on a topic which not all MPs have to be involved in. OK, so what other ways are there of holding MPs to account? Well, one of them is constituency surgeries. They're basically events where the MP uh, goes to their constituency, the area that they represent, and they have to answer questions by members of the public about issues. They're usually local issues, things like you know, not being able to get hospital appointments, uh, and MPs will, will answer those. You can also, if you can't attend an event like that, write to your MP or email them. And again, you can look up their details online. And you don't have to be 18 to do this just because you are not old enough to vote doesn't mean to say that the MP shouldn't address any questions that you might have. Um, now, there have been questions about the safety of MPs at these types of event. Um, that was after the death of an MP called Sir David Amos, who was stabbed to death at a constituency meeting. However, MPs are quite reluctant to stop these types of meeting as basically it's the way that they interact with members of the public. And I think they 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 don't want to lose um, the idea that they are accessible to members of the public. So although, you know, there's potentially some danger involved, as I say, MPs are quite keen for these things to continue. Right then, let's have a little look at elections, because ultimately the way that you can hold politicians to account uh, in perhaps the most obvious way is through elections. Now, in May 2022, there'll be local elections. And whilst those are for local councils and councillors and aren't a general election, they're seen or it's seen as a way of measuring the popularity of the government. It's very likely that with um, the cost of petrol and diesel going up, uh, with the cost of living increasing, um, that, that the Conservative Party will do quite badly. And, um, you know, it'll be a reflection of how people feel about the Conservatives and their ability to um, govern us at this moment in time. As I say, strictly speaking, they're all about things like, you know, bin collections and, and potholes in roads. But uh, they'll be used, as I say, to reflect on how the government's doing. So as a member of the public, what can you do? Well, you know, lots of different things in short. I mean, basically, you can contribute to politics either directly or indirectly. As well as voting, you can join a political party. So if you want to join the Green Party, the Conservatives, Liberal Democrats, Labour, etc., you can do so. Or you can join a pressure group. And that's an organisation that will deal with a single issue such as the environment. Um, so Extinction Rebellion, for example, is a pressure group. They want to put pressure on the government to take care of the environment. They're not interested in other issues. So that's why they're a pressure group. They're only interested in this kind of single issue. There are other forms of action. You can lobby your MP, basically ask your MP to support an issue that you feel strongly about. You can sign an online petition. Those um, can be researched and you know, if you get 100,000 signatures on a UK government petition, it has to be debated in Parliament or you could join a demonstration. So all of these are ways in which you as members of the public can participate in politics and also hold the government to account. One of the last things, though, I'm going to mention is voter apathy, because one of the challenges of democracy is this thing which I've just mentioned, voter apathy. It's basically where voters don't vote. Uh, 
Now, there are lots of reasons for this. Generally, young people uh, don't vote in quite as many numbers or uh, quite as large a number as older people. And there are lots of reasons for this. It may well be that you feel that your vote doesn't count. That's particularly true in an area where perhaps an MP has come from a you know, one political party for a very long time, although we have seen that change in recent elections. Uh, maybe, you know, you don't think that anything is likely to change, that politicians don't do a good job. So as I say, there are lots of reasons why people don't vote. Now, there have been attempts to address this from lowering the voting age to 16, and that takes place in Scottish local elections, to basically toying with the idea of making people vote um, by law. Now, again, you can see some problems with um, these things. Um, so if we lower the voting age, are we likely to have people who, uh, you know, aren't perhaps informed about politics or have no interest in politics? If you make voting compulsory or, or legally required to vote, are you going to get people who just waste their votes? Um, one of the things you might want to do is think about whether we should have better voter education. Um, and, you know, whether that would, uh, would, would impact on the situation. So, as I say, voter apathy is a big problem in democracies um, that's been uh, addressed or attempted to be addressed for quite some time. 